I'm devastated right now. Uh, we just lost Craig four years ago, and now Ronnie's gone. Oh, my heart is so broken. <sighs> well, I met Ronnie when I was around 17, 17 or 18. And I went to this party up in Hollywood Hills. I think it was Hollywood Hills or the Valley. It was Barry Goldwater's party. And I was friends with his agent. I don't know why, I don't remember, but she introduced us. And I was there with my boyfriend at the time and we were having so much fun and Ronnie was just making me laugh the whole entire time. And I didn't really know who he was, obviously. And I wasn't really a big fan of his mom. You know, I wasn't into her music. But of course I knew who she was, but I didn't know who he was. And we became really, really good friends. At the time, he was um, with his longtime, pretty much common-law wife, Tarana, and they have they had two kids together. And I loved her, and I still do love her. Um, such a beautiful person, so funny and kind-hearted. And uh, when I was around 19, Ronnie had needed someone to move into his condo that his mom got him. She would buy her sons a place to live, but she wouldn't pay for all the utilities because she wanted them to work, you know, and I, I totally understand that. And so he needed roommates. And so he asked me to move in. And I said, only if my friend could come with me. So it was three of us living in a beautiful one bedroom condo in Studio City. Uh, we were like the modern threes company, Hispanic, Jew, and black and she was like the dingy blonde and I was the one that you know the Janet you know I always had to take care of all the bills and he was goofy he was funny goofy extremely talented the best bass player I've ever seen you know just but he could have been a comedian really kind-hearted but a tortured soul you know he definitely had been through things in his life and he wasn't the spoiled celebrity son. You know, he wasn't like that. He was humbled. He was good. He, he wasn't spoiled. Yeah, his, his mother would send designer clothes to him maybe once a year. He would have a closet full of designer clothes and he wasn't into that. He didn't care. He just wanted her love, you know, and she would come to visit and we would all meet up at Ma's house, his grandmother, who really was like a mother to him. Uh, Tina had bought her a house in Studio City up in the, um, up on the hill. And so that was kind of the meeting place for everyone, you know, the cousins and the sons and everyone would meet up there and it was glorious. It was like, some of the best times of my life. She was such a good cook and she made the best peach tea I've ever tasted to this day. Um, so she had passed and then his aunt had passed. He was very close to her. Everyone just was passing, you know. Craig committed suicide four years ago. And that, was, that was really hard because I only have good memories of them and they were the family that I didn't have. I really didn't have a family back then. That's what uh, a lot of people don't understand, that they became my family. Elaine, Jackie, his cousin, Craig, Ma, Ronnie was the brother I never had. <clears throat> or. Yeah, my brother wasn't really there, and so 
and for years, even after I moved out, we kept in touch. We were always friends up until, um, I would say the last like five years, even though we talked, uh, maybe a year ago, he was really, he had changed. He was very distant and Afina, his wife had told the world that he was suffering with Alzheimer's and I believe her, I, he wasn't the same. There was little sparks, you know, like old Ronnie sparks and he would remember things and he would light up and he would be the old Ronnie and then he would kind of disappear. And now I hear that he had cancer and I didn't know that. Uh, but it was never, it was like time hadn't, there was no time that had passed when we would talk. As soon as he sparked up and he was himself, it was like time hadn't passed at all. It was always like that when we talked or hung out or whatever. He was one of my best friends of all time, my soulmate, you know, one of those really deep connections. And he said the same about me. I'll always be, he always said, you'll always be my sister, my little sis. And so his death came as a surprise. You know, because I, after the pandemic and all of that, I had always planned to go hang out again and it just never happened. So I, I definitely want to go to his funeral and say my goodbyes and I just, I miss him so much already. I'd already been missing him and now it's forever. And so... Ronnie, I will always love you and miss you. Now you're an angel, just like you were here on Earth. My heart's broken. And to his family, I'm so sorry for your loss. I love you all. And hopefully I'll see you all soon. 62, he was 62. And the fact that he died outside on the sidewalk just kills me, you know? He deserved so much better than that. He couldn't breathe and he was, I have so many good memories, so many, he's so funny. It was always an adventure. Whatever we did was an adventure and constant laughing. It was just, his laugh was infectious too. He had the best laugh. He was like, you know, he would do that in between. And he would always say shops closed when um, he wasn't having it, you know, when something wasn't going well or, oh, uh, it was just so funny. Okay, there you go. I'm just going to continue to mourn his loss and love you, Ronnie.